Good morning, friends. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I know, right? Isn't it wonderful to catch up with each other again in a new academic year? I can hear by the buzz of the place how excited you are. But we are excited also to worship together, which is a central part of our rhythm here at NTC. So if this is your first chapel service here with us, I do want to give you a particular Warm welcome if you're a guest or a visitor, and I'll say a little bit more about that later on as well. You're welcome, or indeed returning students, it's so good to see you as well. Our chapel series for the semester is Sacred Time, Sacred Space, and it's not so much a biblical series as much as it's an opportunity for us to celebrate what we do when we gather in this space. We're going to really celebrate chapel this semester. And your texts for our chapel themes when led by pastoral care groups will come from the lectionary, okay? So we kind of enter into that beautiful rhythm of the scriptures of the church as well. But that will start next week, at least the lectionary readings will, because today we have a guest visitor, and I welcome Cassius more formally later on. After chapel, we're going to go to pastoral care groups, so please hang around and I'll kind of make it clear where you are off to. Chapel's being led today by the Student Council and a wonderful group of keen first-year students who are leading us in worship as well. Yeah, you can make them feel welcome, absolutely. I always forget how clappy a community we are at times, it's beautiful. But I'm going to invite Joe Banks to come up. He's going to formally open our time of worship together. He'll probably welcome you as well and and open our time of prayer. Thank you. Double welcome. You're never too too welcome. Here we are. Um, Welcome to chapel. Um, I was thinking a little bit about, like, the the space we're all in. Some people will feel like they've left home. Some people will feel like they've arrived at home. Some people will feel anxious. Some people will feel excited. Some people will feel sad, happy. All of that is going on in the room. So... What does that mean? I think actually it's really important in these times and those times to focus on the main thing. And that's, for sake, oh, that's my name. Not me, but (laughs) focus on me. No, the sacred time and the sacred space, I think that's really important. And as as the semester progresses, those feelings shift and change. This is, yes, this is the main thing. Um, That it is a sacred time and it is a sacred space. And I hope that this time together will be a blessing to you. Um, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you um, for today. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to come together from different walks of life, different traditions, different emotions, different feelings. Come together united under one thing, and that's your name. I pray that today we would all feel blessed and refreshed, and that you would uh, use the words of Cassius to really speak to our hearts, and, and that we would be, we would be transformed and by your word today. Um, and as we go into a time of worship, I pray that your name will be lifted high. Send your presence here and fill us afresh today. In Jesus' name, amen. Nice to see you. You all look lovely from up here. So if you may, could stand up and worship with us. Thank you.
love you so much, Jesus. We pray that you continue speaking to us today. Teach us how to follow you, how to love you more, and how to live for you. Amen. So, a minute. In our time of prayers, we will make groups of three or four people. If you want five people, it's up to you. And I will give you some points so you guys can pray. And I know that some people find it hard to pray, to pray in English, so I would, I would like to encourage you to pray. Try it in English, or if you find it too hard, pray in your own language, but please pray. So here are some points that you can pray. Pray for NTC, for the new students. Pray for our lecturers and each staff of NTC. Pray for their health and well-being. Also, I know that there are some leaders just, that just recently assumed their roles in their countries. I know that there are some countries which just went through elections. So pray for these people who will assume the power. There are some countries as well that are we will, go, we will go through elections very soon, such as Brazil, so if you want to pray for Brazil, I will not complain about that. For those who, know, who doesn't know I'm Brazilian, pray for the elections, pray for the, against violent acts that may rise because of extremism. Also, there is the war that we know that's going on. Please pray for peace, pray for the people who are suffering in both countries. Pray for the families that lost their members because of the war. And also, I would like to encourage you to pray for our brothers and sisters who face persecution around the world. Uh, if you can pray for the church in Japan, in Mozambique, they just had a, a, violent, a violent act against them recently. They had one person who was killed, their church building, their hospital, and their schools were destroyed, so if you can pray for this church as well, please pray. So you have four minutes to pray, and I will close <laughs> in, in prayer, okay? I know that there are a lot of points.
dear God, we are thankful for this day. We are thankful for the, this opportunity that we have to worship you together as a community here in, at the NTC. Uh, we are grateful for the beginning of another academic year, and we are grateful. For, we are grateful for each new student that it's starting their studies here in, here at the NTC. We pray for each lecture. We pray for each staff member of the college, we pray for each student, and we want to intercede, God, for the new leaders that assume their role or were, recent, or were elected recently. We want to pray that they may act with justice and compassion, and that you may lead them to help people and act with just, justice and mercy. We want to pray for the countries that will have elections Soon we pray for Brazil, we pray for Nepal, and we pray against all kind of acts of extremism and violence that may surge because this period. Father, we also remember about this war that's going through the world now. We pray for Russia, we pray for Ukraine, we pray for peace, we pray for those families who are suffering because this war in both countries. We pray for those who lost members of their families. Please comfort their hearts. And also we pray for the countries that are receiving refugees because of the situation. Father, we also pray for your church that is suffering persecution. We especially pray for the church in Japan. In Mozambique, we pray that you may give them strength and that they may act faithfully in your word. We pray that you, you may send resources so they can rebuild the buildings that were, were destroyed. And we pray that we, as your church, may be with them through this time. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hi, I'll be reading from Job chapter 2, verses 11 to 13. Now when Job's three friends heard of all these troubles that had come upon him, each of them set out from his home, Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuai, and Zophar the Namathite. They met together to go and console and comfort him. When they saw him from a distance, they did not recognize him, and they raised their voices and wept aloud. They tore their robes and threw dust in the air upon their heads. They sat with him on the ground for seven days and seven nights, and no one spoke a word to him, for they saw that his suffering was very great. Thank you. Friends, it's my absolute honour and privilege to introduce a, a great friend, a mine and friend of the college, Cassius Francis, who's going to come and, and speak to the passage that we've just heard. Cassius is originally from Wolverhampton, just outside Birmingham, which I believe that's where Emma's from as well. Just read the scripture passage, so you're getting double brum today, is that what we say, yeah? <laughs> Um, he's a minister in the Wesleyan Holiness Church and supports numerous churches and is involved in church planting as well. For those of you who've been around long enough, he came to speak to us several years ago when he was involved in a role for an organisation called Just Finance, um, supporting people experiencing debt and such things as well. But today he comes to us from Loss and Hope, where he is a church trainer and resourcer. And we're really looking at what it means for us to be bereavement-friendly people of God, bereavement-friendly churches. So please make Cassius feel welcome before we pray for him. Come on up, Cassius. <laughs> Father God, we thank you for a brother, a friend. We pray that you would anoint him, fill him with your spirit, Lord God. Speak to him and speak through him and give us ears to hear and hearts to respond to what you would say to us. Mm. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. 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 Thanks, brother. Bless you all. It is, um, it's, it's really good to be here again 
with you. Some of you may have seen me before. I have to commit, correct uh, Mick to start with. I am a Brummy. Sorry, Emma. Just need to make sure that I correct that in case anybody sees a film in the future. Um, I'm a proud Brummy. Um, I, I was reflecting this morning, just sharing with Mick that I think it's about nine months ago we started arranging uh, the date for today and, and coming up just to share with you, briefly reflecting on these verses from, uh, from Job. Um, but as the, uh, the other brother gave the student, the, the guy from the student union, I can't see him now, uh, and talked about the mixture of feelings that people will have, I could certainly relate to that. Uh, just recognizing the excitement at being a new student, but also the fear of being a new student as well, because I start uh, my MA studies uh, this afternoon. So that preceded <laughs> um, all, of the, uh, all of the arrangements for today. So I'm, I'm really pleased uh, to be here. I am with my uh, colleague, Vicky, if you could stand so that people could see you. Um, <laughs> It's lovely when people clap if you just, that's great. We're coming back, aren't we? And, and just to say in all seriousness that we recognize when we talk about bereavement that even when we preach or, or say particular things that it might give rise to different feelings for people. Uh, Vicky has brought some cards and information along. Um, so if you would like to find out more access support for yourself or for somebody that you know, uh, you will be able to do that. So let's get into uh, this reflection on Job. Firstly, we're told in Job chapter 1 and verse 1 that he was a blameless and upright man. He had seven sons and three daughters. He owned thousands of sheep, thousands of camels, hundreds of oxen and donkeys. It's estimated that Job's wealth today would have meant he was a multi millionaire. And then one day, Job lost everything. We read in chapter 1 and verse 13 that his animals were stolen, those who had worked for him were killed, a fire burned up his sheep, his sons and his daughters died in a disaster that struck their home. And after all that, Job's own health deteriorated. He had sores on the soles of his feet to the crown of his head. Today, I, I am grateful for Emma's reading. We're just going to focus on, on the two verses, 11 through 13, in chapter 2. For those of you who are familiar with the book, there are some really challenging questions that come up when we read Job. Why does God allow this to happen to this man who appears to be upright, doing all of the right things, a follower of God. It doesn't fit our, our maybe traditional theology or understanding that if you do the right thing, God will take care of you. And yet we read about the calamities that overtook him. I want to encourage you that as you are starting into this year at Nazarene, whether you are a new college, uh, student or a student that is returning, that there are some interesting observations when we look at how his three friends respond. And perhaps as, as a challenge, the recognition firstly of being prepared to move from where you are is really important as a student. They moved physically, they went to where Job was. But I remember when I first started to train for ministry, there was an interesting dynamic of whether I want to go to college just to have reinforced all of the things that I was taught from a Sunday school in the Wesleyan Holiness Church, or whether I was being prepared to be challenged and to think differently about what I'd thought about God. Be prepared to move from where you are. We're told now when Job's three friends heard of these troubles that had come upon him, each of them set out from his home. They set out from their home to be present with him. 
If you know someone who has been bereaved, lost someone, we would recognise and, and always share through our work the importance of just being physically present, moving from where you are. Often people will shy away because they're worried about saying the wrong thing. We have bereaved people coming to us and say, do you know, I notice that people cross the road. They don't want to talk to me. I notice that people will avoid my eyes when I'm in church. Just be present. Be alongside. Be prepared to move from where you are. Can I also encourage you to be prepared to show the grief that you experience, perhaps the grief that you see in the bereaved person? We all grieve in different ways. But we can learn here from Job's three friends that it's okay not to be okay. The fact that they tore their robes, sprinkled dust on their heads was a visible sign of mourning for the community. Sometimes in our, our Western culture, I'm blessed. I'm, I'm part Caribbean, I'm part British, so I, I know both. We have the British stiff upper lip, right? The way that we saw the, the royal family mourning, walking behind the coffin of the queen. They, they didn't put a foot wrong. Their faces didn't twitch. Oh, that, oh, d oh didn't they do a good job? Didn't they, didn't, weren't the grandchildren fantastic? They didn't twitch. And yet, I'm used to my Caribbean culture is we bawl. We don't cry, we bawl. That, that, if you don't know what bawl means, that means you're crying from your belly. Everybody knows that you are distressed. We bawl. It's okay to show that you're not okay. Sometimes in our churches, we can present a message that because we are followers of Jesus, that we don't, you know, we don't experience grief like that. We're all right. Somebody's died, but you know, they're, they're blessed. They've gone to heaven, so we're okay. Why should we grieve? It's natural to grieve. It's okay to show that we're not okay. Thirdly, I want to uh, encourage you to to listen. As I said previously, very often uh, we will worry about the right thing to say. Uh, in the work that we do, we recognize actually the important thing is just to be present and to be prepared to, to listen, to sit with some in someone in that time of grief. We're told that they sat with him on the ground seven days and seven nights. No one spoke a word to him, for they knew how great his suffering was. The Hebrew word for, for seven, shiva, um, also the word that describes the Jewish funeral rite and ritual, where the community stay with the bereaved individual for seven days. My Jamaican side, we have something called nine nights. That's not quiet. That's not sitting with, it's loud, but it is gathering. It is people being together. Listening is critical. So there are some challenges. There are some challenges. And, and, and again, very often we will hear um, Christians say, Yes, we're bereaved, but Romans 8, 28 says, we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. God knows best, my brother, my sister. He is in control. Life is God's gift. People shouldn't end it. We can be well-meaning but really hurtful. And so part of the challenge for us is to recognize that often we just need to pause a bit before we speak into someone's life. Again, if you are familiar with the story of Job, you will 
be aware why I've, why I've only chosen these two verses because things start to go a bit downhill from here. As I was sharing with Mick earlier, they, they do the right things to start with, right? They turn up, they're present, they're listening, they're showing their morning, but then they start to theologize about Job's situation. They try and make sense of why this has happened. He must have done something wrong. He, you know, this, it don't just happen, right? To righteous stuff like this doesn't happen. I want to conclude just by reflecting on some things over the last couple of weeks because it's been a crazy couple of weeks in, in our line of work since the death of Her Majesty, Her Late Majesty Elizabeth II. Just to give you some context to this, normally we are begging, aren't we, Vicky? Begging to try and get some space in media, to try and get some airtime, speak to the Christian um, radio stations, even TV, and they're not interested. If we get a couple a year, then we would be lucky. I think the figures um, that my boss shared um, in the last few days is that she has done over 80 uh, radio and TV interviews in the last two weeks. There is a sense of culture change because of the Queen's death. More people talking about bereavement and loss because of her death. For many people, it has unlocked previously unresolved grief and is likely to add to concerns about mental health within our nation if people are not supported to grieve in healthy ways. We see people on courses that we run, when we talk about unresolved grief that will come, someone died 30, 40, 50 years ago, but they, they didn't have the opportunity to deal with it. They didn't grieve properly. So it is not unusual for us. There's also the difference that the death of the queen has made to the represent, rep, reputation of the church, particularly the Church of England, even though I'm not an Anglican, because the media started to talk explicitly about the steadfastness of the queen's faith. Now, you may have different feelings about the queen and, and about her faith, but there is no question from our point of view that people were talking more about Christianity and what it meant to be a faithful follower of Jesus as a result of reflecting on her life. And I thought Archbishop Welby did a brilliant job in the sermon at the funeral reflecting that. Apparently the most watched sermon in history. But if you can go to the next slide for us, I'm also aware that there's been a huge amount happening in other lives over the last few weeks. When we go, say that God loves us all equally, what has been happening for other people around our nation? The family of Chris Caber, an unarmed young black man shot after being stopped by the police. those who are struggling with the cost of living crisis, those who are still suffering and struggling with the flooding in Pakistan, those fighting in Ukraine. Many are experiencing grief and loss. As followers of Jesus, what? do we have to say into this space? We're going to close with the song, and I'm going to hand back over to Mick. If you uh, would like to know more, I, as, uh, as Mick said, I'll be back in here, uh, maybe just chatting for an hour or so, just talking through a bit more of what we do around bereavement and loss and how you can maybe support through your churches. God bless you. Thanks for listening.
Let's pray together as we close. God, as we continue to sit in this often uncomfortable space of loss and bereavement, whether individual or societal, we thank you that you are close to the brokenhearted and you comfort those who mourn. But Lord, we are also aware that in the mission of God, it's often us you send into those spaces to be your comfort and your peace. And so Lord, would you equip us to do so? Help us to say more without saying very much at all, Lord God. And help us to posture ourselves in such a way where it's just the very presence of Jesus that flows through us as we sit in the quiet with those who need it. Lord, if there's anybody here today in this particular place of loss, grief, mourning, comfort them in their sorrow, I pray, Lord. And again, if you would use us to do so, we say here we are, send us. We pray all of these things in your name, giving you thanks for who you are, for what you've done and what you continue to do in this community and in the world. Amen. Amen. Bless you, friends. So here's what we're going to do now. Like Cassie has said, he's going to uh, be available a little bit later on to continue this conversation in a kind of workshop seminar form. It will depend on how many people turn up. It might be a round table discussion, might be a little bit more. That, that's going to be begin about 20 to 12, so uh, 20 to 1, yeah, 20 to 1, 12 40 is when that's, that's going to begin. So that gives us about 25 minutes to go to our pastoral care groups for kind of introductions today, get to know each other a little bit more and, and kind of set the tone for that space. And then, like I say, at 20 past, make your way across. Some soup and bread will be ready for those who are part of the seminar. It's not a free lunch this, um, uh, this Tuesday. It's for those participating in Cassius's uh, workshop. So that will begin uh, around 12.40, 12.45, and the rest of us can go off to lunch. Is that okay? Yeah? Good. So, pastoral care groups then. I'll just do what I do every year. I'll read out the, the lists and kind of make sure everybody knows where they're going. I apologize in advance for some any mispronunciations of names. I'm, I'm really doing my best. And if, if I can blame anything, I'll blame my Glaswegian accent. How about that? Okay. So, uh, first group is led by Mija Wee, Jacob Lett. They also have Doug Froiling as part of that group as well. Mija, can you stand just so everybody can see you? If Jacob's here as well, stand and give us a wave to. Yeah, so you're going to be following these folks up to Mija's office in the White House. And then Mija and Jacob's group, we have Chichi Ofoegbu, Donna Wild, Efrubio Oreka, Esther Ho, Jamie Ross, Paula Ray Gilbert, Regan Mumbwazi. Samuel Abaraboroma, Samuel Chung, Sarah Bayless, Sophie Pio Yates, Tayo Otakiti, Tandy Sokala, Thomas Dickinson, and Tina Woof. All right, if that's you, you're heading off with Mija and Jacob and Doug. All right, I'll keep reading. Next up, we have Svetlana's group. She leads that with James Hunter. Svetlana and James, are you here? Wonderful. You're going to meet in Svetlana's office. So in Svetlana and James's group, we've got Arana McCanna, Brandy Myers, Chimango Money, Dan Cronin, Esther Newton, Graham Dunwell, Hannah Bowen, Hu Jones, Josh Eckhart, Liam Harvey, Naomi Katika, Ryan Kilbride, Tim Nelson, and Yvette Wong. If that's you, you're heading off with Svetlana and James. Next up is my group. This is me. In fact, I'll do my group last. That makes sense, doesn't it? Let's do that. Next up, we've got Steve Wright's group. Steve leads his group with Robert Cardo, librarian. And for today as well, Fiona is going to be involved in that also. Uh, Steve's group meets in the conservatory just off of the cafe here. So in Steve's group, we've got Aaron Malloy, Aaliyah Pike, Ben Ellum, Chitning Lee, Darren Matthews, Dwosa Lee, 
uh, Elizabeth Deswani, Hannah McVerry, Jonathan Shamshed, Joseph Nyagez, Julius Okene, uh, Kaylee Shaw, Sharon Tiga, Stephen Francis, Terry Leah Richardson. If that's you, you're heading with Steve out this door, back through the cafe uh, into the conservatory there. Next up, we've got Louise Kenyon, Anna Whitfield, and also Scott Cundiff is going to help with that one as well. So Louise and Anna are the, the quiet pair in the corner there. Uh, and they are going to be meeting in the Youth and Community Hub, the brand new Youth and Community Hub. Excellent, with dancing apparently. Okay, so we have Akash Shrestha, uh, Alex McMahon, Amofo McDonald, uh, Bethany Arrowsmith Cooper, Emmy Uchi, Follow Ajabadi, Gabriel Modesto, Hannah Sanders, Ian Isaacs, Jack Heinzman, Josh Barkley Watt, Rebecca Early, Ruth Teague, Samuel Whitehead, Sunil Massa. You're heading off with Louise and Anna to the Youth and Community Hub. Then we have Julie Lund and Jordan Hammond. Julie's at the back there. She's waving. Is Jordan around as well? Um, you're going to be meeting in Julie's office. Yep. So in Julie's group, we've got Anne McGreekin and Rooney. Bernard Asari, Beth Ellis, Bryce Moore, Daniel Marvin, David Allen, Francis Mena, Jeffrey War, Hans Nyman, Jacob Branton, Joel Kirkham, Kieran Fielder, Marion Surgeoner, Naomi Schmidt, and So Jung Kim. You're going to follow Julie. Okay, up to Julie's office. Then we have Peter Ray and Trevor Hutton. Peter Ray, the dean here. Trevor was around as well. He's at the back there. This group meets in the dean's office in the White House, so you can follow Peter and Trevor. You've got Amos, Amoa, Andrew Debney, Anik Mal, Cameron Priest, Dorcas Somaregi, Herfa Miller, Ian Francis, Jackson Turner, Jez Smith, Lily Cross, Naomi Piercy, Paul Franco, Pedro uh, Martins de Freitas, Rob McAvoy and Roger Brown, you're heading off with Peter. I know, right? Get myself another job here. And then in my group, we've got Alex DeMartis, Beth Ford, Ebenezer Oyewo, Emma Hill, Erin Kilmartin, Francis Wilmot, Joel Banks, Josh Boston, Laura Henderson, Mary Smith, Matt Morley, Samantha Jabang Jabangwe. Uh, Samuel Amoa, Tim Geddes, and Wana Shabemba. You are with me. Whoop, whoop. We're in the chaplaincy office, so we go this way. <laughs> 